I'm so sorry, but this is a costume party. Enjoy the evening, sir. There is still plenty of time before the grand finale. All right. What if I write an article about these people here? Can you help me gather information about Cordona's elite? May I ask for your assistance? Uh, don't take it personally, sir, uh, but I know nothing about this. You have such pretty hands. What can you do with them? My goodness, Sherlock. They made a blood fountain. No, John, it's definitely not blood, just wine. Gahors, it, I guess. Gahors. Beauteous. Manchios is the best, as always. Can I ask you a question? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Sherlock, friend, I wasn't sure you'd come. Berna, I uh, see you are not yourself. The more time you spend here in Cordona, the more I feel it my duty to bring you into our world and show you all we have to offer. And what is on offer today? Pleasure, indulgence, relief, and relaxation. You've earned some time for yourself, have you not? Those who know me would say I'm incapable of it. <laughs> Nonsense. I refuse to believe there is anyone permitted to know Sherlock Holmes. Huh. You may be right. Then free yourself from inhibition and expectation. The night is young, and so are the guests. You should try to enjoy both. It's not healthy for handsome men to spend every night alone, and certainly not in a house filled with such melancholic memories. I must admit, my travels have proven more taxing than expected. I'm less confident in my life and myself. A time of relaxation seems a distant dream. So can I tempt you with a physical aid to your moral consolations? There's wine, of course, and something to smoke, or perhaps an artificial paradise. Yes, something more spiritual, a potentiator to sharpen the mind. A 7% solution of, well, that'd be telling, but you must try it. My mind already operates at a far higher level than most. I struggle to believe anything could improve it. My ultimate duty is to provide the world with truth, and I do that perfectly well as is. Duty? You've never cared about that before. Of course I do. Exposing a lie, revealing a fact, that is a moral responsibility. 
that's not morality. Morals are what happens afterwards when truth collides with consequence. Do you ever follow up on cases you solved? Do you ever see what happened next, visit the victims, ensure justice is served in the courts? And how do you choose where to direct your attention? Are there not deserving causes to which your brilliance could be applied but isn't? You ascribe me more power than I possess. I have a narrow skill set and work within that mandate. What occurs afterward is irrelevant. With every action or inaction, you place a finger on the scales of morality. Many in the city would see you as abdicating your responsibility. I, I haven't. Not me, of course. Morality is subjective, just like truth. There is little to be gained from indulging in it, and far better things to indulge in. Now I must insist on easing any burdens I've placed upon your shoulders. Show yourself a kindness, and try this rather delectable concoction. If this solution truly does assist with thinking, then well, perhaps it would be puerile to overlook an opportunity to study it. I'll take it with me. Yes, Sherlock. Very good. And now, our evening begins in earnest. <laughs> I just remembered. I'm sorry, Sherlock. My mind's delightfully impaired. Please take this key. It opens the altar room, past the library. Pardon? Altar room? What now, Werner? Go quickly and find our Fabio. Only you can make him talk. I'll join you in a minute. Well-known and recent plays to keep up to date with the current trends. These medieval botany and chemistry books look even more satanic than the occult ones. Romantic poetry and prose. Someone's in touch with their feelings. Codex Orcus. Why does this occult book sound like a flower? Was he here this whole time? The herbs here are salvia divinorum. They have a slight hallucinogenic effect to emphasize the ceremony. This elaborate box must be for the ritual dagger. The ointment smells... Mouse-like. I presume it is an aphrodisiac prepared from a Spanish fly. The ointment... This oil has a slight aroma of flowers and olive. This crude tattoo partially covers a slave branding. This worm-like sigil has been drawn with his own blood. This golden handle has a blood stain on it. The dagger is heavy and sharp, but lacks balance. A blunt force trauma may have suffered an internal hemorrhage. The wound is deep. A precise strike reached the heart. The victim has clenched the fabric so firmly in his fist that it's nigh impossible to remove it. He died right here.
Enough cigars to burn down the entire mansion. An open wound spoiled the carpet. Why don't people tidy up after themselves? Blood. A sturdy bottle met a not so sturdy human. It didn't break only because it was unopened. The pitcher is empty, but with puddles around it. Blood clots are adhered to the sides of the drain. Identical to the robes the guests are wearing. Props, decorations, and tools for a more detailed set. This is a different ritual. anyone accept such behavior. A useful tool for a disguise arsenal. Handcrafted and luxurious cufflinks. There's also a note. For my Fabio, Manchos. Do you recognize me in one of these? I suppose not. The key is similar to the one that Vogel gave me. The capital F on the key fob might refer to Fabio. Similar to the guests' robes, apart from the bloodstains. This one looks like a twisted symbol of Venus, drawn in a hurry. Curtains do not guarantee privacy. And you still need a crack despite being ethereal. Do you know what was here before Manchiosa's family bought it? That's what I like about this party. 
Bring me more dirt, Sherry. One more piece, and I can expose the base hedonists. Manchios had to enforce the masks after the scandal. <laughs> Manchios had... Pin them down, this scoop. Thank you, Sherlock. <laughs> Werner, care to explain what is going on here? On nights like these, it's not unusual for some attendees to get a little exuberant. It's part of the appeal. Unfortunately, it appears things have gotten out of hand. Yes, some are more prone to bend the rules of morality. That's murder. I doubt there's anything left to bend. Why did you not tell me immediately? We were chatting about trivial matters for some time. If I'm completely honest, Sherlock, I've consumed a rather potent cocktail of substances. My attention slips and drifts. But I'm glad I thought to call for you. You sent me a disguise. Oh, dear. Did I? Well, since I found the body, Mr. Manchios has agreed that you can investigate the matter. I promise my mind will behave itself going forward. All right. Then pull yourself together, Werner. What is it about these nights that you were so eager to share with me? Well, they're not always in the evenings, but they are in the shadows. People gather to test their boundaries in a safe and consensual atmosphere. Often with more stains than your typical crime scene. But that is the point. Who are we to judge? I suppose that's fair. What about today, then? Was anything different? Well, I was invited as a special guest. It was supposed to be a time of both divine and carnal pleasures. A scratch for every unconventional itch. I imagine you're reeling from your shattered expectations. On the contrary, there is still spectacle, stimulation and release, merely in a different form. I like to let life entertain me. Or death. Mr. Manchios is the owner of the manor, yes? And the host of Cordona's most memorable parties. He promises even the ugliest guest a partner for the night. And for the ones with more unconventional tastes, Mr. Manchios provides other services. What a caring person. You cannot begin to imagine. How did you discover the body? In between guzzles of alcohol. I was set to perform in a fecundity ride with Fabio and came to inquire further. It was a staged ritual where he was to play the principle of life. And the rehearsal was unsuccessful? Ha! Huh. Who knows? I found him alone on the altar, his blood dripping to the floor. And then? Then I called Mr. Manchios. He was panicking, so I told him about you. We left the room and locked the door. Then we were... Filling time... Waiting for you was stressful. We indulged in some simple comforts. Overindulged, perhaps. Were you well acquainted with Fabio, the victim? Everyone knew Fabio, or wanted to. His beauty was the talk of the island. Too handsome to go unnoticed. He was magnetic. Fat wallets fought for the privilege of having him. He offered the pleasures of performance, and more. What about the fertility ritual? There was something about Fabio being a principle of life. Fabio was supposed to portray the beauty of life's origin. Flowers, oil, not this travesty that seems straight out of the Inquisition. So this ritual is not the fertility rite. What was it meant to look like? 
It begins with a woman lying naked in a flower bed on the altar. She represents Gaia, the earth. As I cover her in oils, we chant for the principal. As our calls reach a climax, Fabio enters and copulates with her. After he finishes, I stab her with a dagger. That part's just pretend, of course. But the intercourse is not? I did not expect you to be such a prude. Are you a virgin? It is nothing to be ashamed of, but it would explain the color of your cheeks. The fertility rite marks the start of our festivities. The principle of life is beautiful, intimate, essential. It must not be stopped. <sighs> Yet it appears that someone did stop it. What about the naked woman? Can you tell me anything about her? Oh, yes, Matista. She's one of Fabio's compatriots and a performer, too. I haven't seen her today, actually. When you discovered the body, was the door open? No, it was locked. Oh, that reminds me. It's a minor detail, but the first time I came to speak to Fabio, I left without entering, having been unable to open the door. You didn't have the key? No, I had it. Don't look at me like that. I was mostly sober. I suspect there was a key in the other side of the door, blocking the lock. That detail may very well be major, Werner. Well done. So you returned later only to find the lock was not blocked? Correct. After an hour had passed, I tried again and was able to unlock the door. That's when I discovered poor, handsome Fabio. The police remain unaware of this tragic event? Some of them may be hiding behind their masks. They conceal many things. But we didn't want the authorities to create more problems. Besides, after a few cocktails, their incompetence will have soared to new heights. How do you know I even want the case? I promised you relaxation. If there's one thing I know about you, Sherlock, it's that nothing soothes you more than a good mystery. You've got a lot to do, Sherlock. The person leaned against the doorframe. They left a smudged trail of blood. A bloody handprint on an armchair. The wounded person was here for some time. There appear to be no further traces leading to the altar. So, Sherry, do you have any ideas about the case? Perhaps, perhaps. I think I can deduce what happened here.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. The bottle was used as a weapon during a scuffle in the smoking lounge. Then, to ensure no one would interrupt, the murderer locked the door. The unconscious body of the victim was moved to the altar room. Once the body was on the altar, the murderer thrust the dagger into the victim's heart. Symbols were drawn with the blood. The wardrobe was used to hide the bloodied robe from anyone's eyes. The killer washed himself and took a clean robe from the hangar before leaving. Are you all right? You're on the floor, not moving. I think I know what happened here. starting to put the pieces together. Fabio was stabbed. I see nothing gets past you, Werner. Yes, he was stabbed, but only after being knocked out in the next room and placed here. I do not yet know why. So who's responsible? Well, it was one person working alone, and the murderer has now donned a robe. He or she could be hiding in plain sight. We have lost time, Werner, but your discretion may prove to be a benediction after all. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. The murderer had to have access to this room. After the crime, he used his own key to lock the door. So, who had the key to the altar room? I'm not sure. As a special guest, I was provided one by Mr. Manchios. He should be able to tell you of any others. Where can I find him? Most likely in the main hall, entertaining his guests. He has a mask with golden stars. You can't miss him. But please be discreet. We don't want to risk disturbing the revelry. Oh, my God. 
Kurt Manchios, I presume? I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, you must be the one Werner told me about. What a sweet voice you have. It must belong to a handsome young man. Can I call you Sherlock? As you wish, Mr. Manchios. Mr. Vogel asked me to help you. The body in the altar room requires answers, and quickly, I suspect the murderer to still be here. What? Lower your voice. I don't want anyone to hear us. Did you know Fabio well? People are starting to look at us, Sherlock. Change the subject. I can't believe what happened to him. To me. Such an atrocity. Think what it means for me. A wonderful evening for so many good, influential, and rich people has been ruined. I have betrayed all my promises of exotic delights. I don't understand. Surely a murder would affect your reputation to a greater extent. Please, isn't this why you are here? I thought you were a silent magician. Do your tricks and make it go away. I need to find all those who had the key to the altar room. As far as I know, Mr. Vogel, Fabio, and you had access to it. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Also, Matista and Santos. Santos? Who is that? Santos Pinchetti, my major domo, in his opinion at least. I'd like to speak to Mr. Pinchetti and Matista. Do you have somewhere I might have a private conversation with them? Of course, of course. Let me think. Matista is entertaining the guests somewhere, and Santos... Oh, yes. He will be busy with the servants. Or the cook. What's that noise? What's going on? Freeze, filth. You're under arrest. Look at you. Committed a crime, and now I have to free you, kiss your hand, and apologize for the inconvenience. I did tell you that Mr. Vogel and I were innocent. I emphasized it in my statement. Your statement? Thanks to some bigwigs who work for the so-called good of the country by releasing fleas like you. Thank God we have Vogel in this letter. Once I get to that goldfish, I'll... Bigwig? Oh, my wretched brother Mycroft and his long nose. Wait, did you say Mycroft? Mycroft Holmes? Are you the youngest son of Violet Holmes, rest her soul? Is there something wrong with that? Do you know something about her? I was working on the paperwork of her case while you still had milk on your lips. Would you happen to remember anything of the events? Well, I didn't make the inquiry, but I remember seeing some notes. Why? You must help me. It would mean a great deal to me if you could find any information about that day. Huh. Got you hooked, right? You know what? Stark and the others think they're the smartest here, thanks to you. Let me get this straight. Are you listening to me, lad? 
I'm all ears. Take this case. Report to me only, to Constable Harvey Osbald. I'll leave everything I have on this table. Find the murderer. Be a real copper. Question the suspects, make them sing, give me something substantial. And if Mr. Vogel is not a suspect? If he's innocent, then you can take your favourite degenerate away from here. If you slip or mess with the evidence, then trust me, your brother won't save you from my bludgeon. Meanwhile, I'll be checking the archive for you. If anybody asks, then you're a consulting detective. Let's make a start, then. Partner. I'm glad we managed to get the scoop before the raid. Back on track to solve the case. This area is restricted. Good day, Mr. Manchios. I am Constable Oswald's partner in this investigation. Be quick and gentle. Some of your colleagues are untrained boars. Although I don't mind meeting young officers, the new blood here. If you cooperate in finding Fabio's murderer, there will be no need to meet with the boars again. That voice. Furnace, friend? You're the policeman. What a disappointment. Only an undercover agent can scour a ditch full of deviants. I am a consulting detective, although I'm capable of replacing the entire department through my consultations. Sharp-tongued, I like it. May I presume this tongue will get us out of this trouble? I would be so indebted and glad to repay you. Nothing's changed. I'm looking for the murderer. That's the only way to get us out of trouble. But it shouldn't take much time, correct? We're all busy, after all. I need to examine you first.
You are a little over the top with your use of makeup, Mr. Manchios. Is it so difficult for you to acknowledge your age? Well, Sherlock, that's easy for you to say to an old man when you look as though you are barely 15. But still, it shouldn't be an issue for someone of your status. For people of my age, it isn't an issue, no. But the younger ones can be so afraid of wrinkles and grey flecks. I have to adapt. Such a methodical man who cares for his body but misses the soap under his fingernails. Are you so impatient or perhaps even impulsive? I wouldn't call myself that. Silly little details. If I missed it, it wasn't important. Or rather, it was less important than who or what I was focused on. What was Fabio like? His personality, his habits? Anything you can tell me? He was the brightest star of my parties. Young, magnetic, and full of energy. I don't even want to mention his beauty. Otherwise, I'll be sobbing. An expensive champion, I imagine. His performances were flawless. He deserved his payment. Do you think he was murdered because of money? Possibly. What about the other guests? Were they used to opening their wallets as well? I wouldn't restrict my guests from anything. I'm sure Fabio received a few coins from others for his services. Mr. Vogel told me a little about your parties, but I would like to know more directly from you. I'm all yours, Sherlock. You have me arrested and locked here with you alone. I'd like to know who you usually invite to your parties. Free minds who are able to leave reality for an evening, who can taste forbidden fruit without prejudice. There is nothing that quite spices up life like these parties. Assuming one is old enough and has worked many years for the good of one's country. Oh, all true laborers, I see. Why did you invite Mr. Vogel as your special guest? He's a pretty fellow. He's capable of surprising the public. He has a talent for saying words that no one else would wish to either say or hear. I suppose I can't argue with that. He is a free addition to the eccentricity of the party, which is fine by me, as long as it enhances my party. I've no idea about that. You'd better ask someone else. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. You'd better ask someone else. Do you have any idea who tipped off the police to raid your mansion, Mr. Manchios? Of course. It was you. I could even say you Sherlocked me in here. A good guess, but the wrong one. The fellow who did that was Mr. Pinchetti, your major domo. What? Santos? But how could he even know? If he's not the murderer himself, the ungrateful swine, he has dared to besmirch my reputation. Not a very eloquent choice of words. What should I call him then, since he's a snitch? Make him talk, Sherlock. I'm quite certain he knows more about the murder than he has told the police. I've no idea about that. I've no idea about that. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. You'd better ask someone else. You'd better ask someone else. You bought an expensive pair of cufflinks for Fabio. Were they his price? Or were they a tip for an exclusive show? It was pure business. Fabio escorted me a few times. I was merely showing my gratitude. This pair cost a small fortune. You must be extremely grateful then. Tell me more. You've thrust a knife in an exposed nerve, Sherlock. Yes, he was my protege and my beacon also. With my experience, and his beauty, we could have achieved anything. I had faith in him. I would have made him. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. You are Matista, Fabio's friend. This body, yes, it's Matista. But it's a mere shell that will die someday. Just like Fabio. 
Please accept my condolences for your friend. Thank you. I'm just here to ask questions and find Fabio's murderer. It will not bring Fabio back. Fabio and yourself were slaves, am I correct? You have a similar branding on your body. Yes. It was a long time ago. I couldn't help but also notice fresh cuts upon your forearms. The cuts helped me to forget my past, to cover the old wounds and hide them. How did you escape? Something happened. One night the master fell down the stairs. I made him fall, and he died. We ran away that day. We managed to get on a ship and traveled here, to Gordona. Fabio and I started a new life here. It was very hard at first, but it became better with time. Until today. The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite, sometimes.
I know I can handle the news. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. Werner, are you all right? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. Ha! <laughs> what did you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway, I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder, suppose you couldn't get the proof to your truth. Would you tell a lie to the guard that enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? There are lines I will not cross, Werner. I will do my best to secure your release, but with Proof, not deception. Really? How many white lies have you told on this island? Why not for me? Why not another? That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. Do not give up hope. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I can't follow you here. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I can't follow you here. I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you? Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. I know you can untangle this mess. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. I know I can handle the news. Are you able to help me? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. I've nothing to say about this. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I've nothing to say about this. You'd better ask me a question I know how to answer. I've nothing to say about this. Have you considered Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. Could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. can question Mr. Pinchetti in the interrogation room. I recognize the key from the altar room among these.
Mr. Pinchetti? A pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. You are the majordomo of a rich mansion, and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing. You hide, under heavy makeup, a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means. Do you have money troubles? I do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. One can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? I don't actually know. Perhaps from a guest? Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always some um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Pinchetti. We'll continue later. I know nothing about this. I can't help you. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domer? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to dye and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. He died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship.
Please let me out. You've got a lot to do, Sherlock. Continue our investigation while I look for the papers. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. This area is restricted. I know I can handle the news. I know I can handle the news. That's not something I know much about. I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. Did you hear Basilio? Did you hear Basi? In the police. Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. Good night. The ticket, please, if you want me to help you. I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. Ah, oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials K.M. in the corner. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. A 
handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. Her key to the altar room. That's not for bedtime reading. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. Not the time for privacy. Werner's personal sketchbook. An emergency kit for boredom. Thank you, officer. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchios? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? to wash away the ugliness of the world, sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic, love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought.
Please let me out. Please let me out. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché. This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Manchios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Manchios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Manchios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. Investigation while I look for the papers. Continue our investigation while I look for the papers. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Manchios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? For what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel, he had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children. You had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust, love, so cruel and painful, and Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. 
Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. Fabio played with your feelings. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way that you would have liked. You wanted to be loved, but Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You were passionate, and so you struck him. Once you understood your mistake, it was too late. You were afraid, so you staged the ritual. With such a story, you might be sentenced to a few years. It might clean your conscience, and soon the case will be forgotten. No. No. This is my decision. I'll talk to Constable Oswald to see what I can do. There's no fool like an old fool. Kurt Manchios did it. A young boy played with the heart of an old man. The latter couldn't handle it. The evidence I obtained clearly shows that the quarrel was not intended to end badly. It was an accident. Showing pity towards your own kind, Holmes. <laughs> Whatever. All I'm saying is that prison won't take much away from an old and crushed man. Fine. A big name like that will still give me a promotion. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry, it looks like you've almost found what you wanted. 